Got another question here on the NMR topic. So we're up to number 19 now. There's the question there. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so there's a little bit more to this one than the norm. So as well as working out from the proton NMR spectrum, the structure of L, we've also got to say what M and N are because we're told that when compound L is reflux with aqueous hydrochloric acid, we get these two organic compounds. So the first thing we want to do is look at the infrared information. Uh, that's going to help us establish what kind of compounds M and N are. That's going to help us work out what L must have been. And then we're going to go to the proton NMR spectrum, work out the structure of L, and then come back to M and N and establish what they must be. Okay, so from the infrared information, we know that M shows two key absorptions. So there's this broad absorption in that range there. Now, that's indicative of the OH of a carboxylic acid group. And we've also got a strong absorption in this range here, which indicates the presence of a C double bond O. So it's pretty safe to assume that M must be a carboxylic acid. From the information about N, we can see one key absorption in this range here. So the likelihood is that N is an alcohol. So if you think about what's happened to L, it's been refluxed with aqueous hydrochloric acid. It's formed the carboxylic acid and the alcohol, M and N. So L must therefore be an ester. So there's all that written up now. So we're going to go to the proton NMR spectrum, work out what L is, and then we'll go back and say what M and N must be. So like I always do, I'm going to take each signal in turn in the proton NMR, and we're going to talk about the splitting pattern. We're going to talk about the area, the peak area, and we're also going to talk about what the chemical shift tells us. So we'll start with this signal here. So we've got a singlet. So that means there are no adjacent hydrogens to the protons causing this signal. The area of two means it's a CH2 group that's causing the signal. And the shift value, so the 4 ppm, is telling us that the protons are in the H to C to single bond O environment. So there's that written up. So if we just draw this little part of the molecule from that information, so we've got hydrogens, two hydrogens, and that carbon singly bonded to an oxygen. And we can't have any hydrogens on this carbon here, this one here, otherwise these would have been split. And obviously we've got a singlet in the proton NMR spectrum. Uh, we know that L's an ester, so the chances are that we've got that on that side as well. So moving on to this peak now, so we've got a quartet. So that means an adjacent CH3 group to the protons causing this signal. The area is two, so there are two protons causing the signal, so it's a CH2 group. And the shift of what's that, 2.3 is indicative of H to C to C double bond O. So there's that written up there. And what we can do, if we just use um, this structure that I've already started with, so we're talking about this side of the ester group now. So we must have a CH2 group that's caused that signal and adjacent to that is a CH3. So we've actually finished the right hand side of the molecule. So if we move on to this really tall signal now, so this is at about 1.3 ppm. This is a singlet, so there's no adjacent hydrogens. There are nine hydrogens in the environment, so we must have three equivalent CH3 groups. And the shift is H to C to R. So we're talking about what's bonded to this carbon here. Remember that we've finished this side of the ester off. So we must have three methyl groups off this carbon. So you can see we've actually sorted the molecule. We've got the structure for L now, but what we can't do is leave it at that. We've got to go to that final peak in the proton NMR, and then we can finish off with what M and N must be. 
So we'll just go through the motions with this signal, even though we know what L is. So we've got a triplet at about 1.1 ppm. That means there's an adjacent CH2 group. Area of 3 means it's a CH3 group that's caused the uh, signal. And the shift value is H to C to R. So all that's doing really is confirming the presence of this CH3 group. See, I've sort of tied them in with the highlighter pen. So we've got three hydrogen in the environment, area three, adjacent to a CH2 because of the triplet that we're seeing. And these are indeed in the H to C to R environment. So we've got the structure of L completely sorted. Now, if you remember what we're told about L, we're told it's refluxed with aqueous hydrochloric acid. That's obviously going to hydrolyze this ester. So it's going to break this bond here. This part of the ester with the C double bond O in will become the carboxylic acid. So that will be M. And this part of the ester with the single bonded O in is going to become an alcohol. So that's going to be N.